Hey everybody, it's time. <clears throat> Tonight we're going to talk about electric static charge and gold. Kind of another angle we talked last night. If you recall, we talked about magnetic effects and gold. And the fact that gold basically is not magnetic. But it has an interesting property when it comes to static charge. And that's true of anything that is as conductive as gold or silver, or platinum for that matter in that it can have induced magne magnetic properties by an electric charge. Actually, a static charge across the surface will generate a difference in the electric field across that gold, and it will cause it to be attracted or repelled based on which direction the charge is aimed. So what we're going to do is look a little bit at why that might be. Let's check to make sure everybody's on board. <clears throat> Probably a little early. Let me keep rolling for a minute. I'm pretty sure that the audio and everything's going through fine. So uh, this is kind of a different point of view. We've been touching on physical properties of gold. What this piece of information can do is it can provide you with some insight into a couple of mining methods that are used, specifically mining using dry washing in the desert. As the air dries out, we have a, a situation that is perfect for the use of electrostatic charge to separate gold. And we have ways of doing that. So let's take a look at some of what might be, or what physical effects that might be that would cause that kind of thing. So I thought we'd start off by looking at this picture uh, right now. This is talking about electrostatic induction. Uh, tonight, we're sponsored again by 2020 Report. Check it out. It's about how water flow concentrates gold and where you might look for gold or start looking for gold on your site if you're plaster mining. And uh, even in the desert, what you might look for in the way of indicators that would show you where gold would tend to hide out. Uh, let me move my mic here a little bit. Didn't realize I was aiming over there. Um, <clears throat> so let's take a look at this particular subject. Um, you know, again, what we're looking for is gold. So when we're looking for gold, one of the things we want to keep aware of is there's prospecting. That's the business of hunting for gold. And then there's mining. And that's the business of recovering the gold that you're finding while prospecting. The two can oftentimes overlap. But in, a, in some cases, they're sort of melded because of how you have to do the prospecting. You have to do the separation in a particular way. And the thing we're going to talk about tonight really does overlap with that quite a bit. <clears throat> so let's take a look. So electrostatic induction. This is a Wikipedia article about it. You can look it up. But basically what we're going to be doing is causing an electrostatic influence or, or, a, or a you know pattern of charge movement on the gold that causes the gold to develop a difference in charge across its surface. That difference in charge, when contrasted to a nearby plate that's charged differently and insulated, that's the key feature. The two have to be separated from each other by an insulator, like air, or could be an insulator like plastic or glass. <clears throat> Anything that would keep it from conducting through that, through that uh, void. If it conducts through it, then it becomes a conductor and the charge dissipates, and then the effect drops dramatically. So what we're looking for here is what happens when we put a charged plate nearby some gold that's floating, say, in air, and has a chance to develop its own charge by this electrostatic induction effect. So this induction effect basically causes a, a change in the properties. So this thing right here causes a change in the properties across the gold that makes the gold be attracted similar to a magnet. And that is a very important key characteristic that we can take advantage of when we develop our, our uh, dry washer or desert, uh, desert sluice box. Okay, so it's air driven. We're keeping things floating and vibration bounces the stuff up and down, but we charge the plates and that causes them to move more effectively toward the charged plate <clears throat> where they can be locked down into those riffles in the bottom. And that's an advantage a huge advantage when it comes to looking at how dry washers work. And so, um, so the idea is that a redistribution of the electric charge takes place simply because 
in the field, electric fields, and that's what this thing depicts is an electric field. So when we're looking at this kind of thing going on right over here, uh, we basically have this electric field effect and that can cause, you know, the, the charge to change its distribution and that causes this, this, you know, field effect to take place. So in the presence of a charged body, an insulated conductor will develop a positive charge on one end and a negative charge on the other. That induction effect, you know, goes back to Ben Franklin even earlier than that. So it's one of those things is very interesting in terms of its historic uh, source, but it's also interesting in terms of uh, the the kind of effect that it can be used. A Van de Graaff generator is a simple machine that does this kind of static generation, but there's other ways of doing it too, in in including electronic. Um, but the idea is that it has a pretty high electrostatic potential. So the voltage has to be constant. It's DC, but it's a high voltage. So it's not something that's just a couple 12 volts. You know, it's going to be a pretty high voltage. And that higher the voltage, the more it can induce up to a point. That point is called a breakdown voltage for whatever the insulator is. And at that point, the thing goes into, into plasma and conducts across that junction. You've seen that if you've ever seen a spark plug fire or you've ever seen uh, an, a spark around your barbecue. You know, basically you're creating a plasma and it's jump, the, the current is jumping across that gap and shorting out the voltage. And then the voltage drops. <clears throat> At that point, this force that this thing generates would die out. And so it's not to our advantage to have it break down. That all makes sense. A big bunch of work here. Um, the, the, the reality is that, you know, to go into detail, it's way beyond uh, what I want to do for you guys in terms of gold prospecting. And the reason is that it gets into Maxwell's equations and a lot of uh, electric field uh, tensor uh, calculus kind of stuff. And we're not, we're not here to snow you with that. But the fact is you can see the effects of it with something like styrofoam. You know, you've seen that. Here's a cat with styrofoam peanuts stuck to it. Um, you've had the same thing with a balloon <clears throat> and so forth. And so that inductive electrostatic charge effect can be very useful because you see how that stuff sticking to the cat. Well, that could be gold for all you know, sticking to that cat. And then all you got to do is wring your cat out and you got yourself a gold mine. I didn't say that, did I? So uh, that's just one more kind of electrical effect that we can take advantage of using Coulomb's law and all that good stuff to, to basically help us mine gold. Uh, here is an example of it using none other than gold in a gold leaf electroscope. You know, when the charge is applied to this surface, <clears throat> the gold itself the charges in it move out to the outer edge and guess what like charges repel like charges and so the two move apart you can see that going on right here where the two are you know floating apart in this winged appearance normally the gold leaf electroscope the two plates would be lying straight down in parallel but instead once they're charged whoosh, open they go and so that's caused because of this electrostatic effect that's a force forces come to our advantage we use gravity okay as an accelerant it's a force we use uh water flow and and friction as a force to separate gold we use uh air flow to move gold and to cause it to so forth and we can use this electrostatic charge to help force the gold to separate out of that flow so that's kind of what we're talking about tonight real simple i just wanted to kind of touch bases with you on it and you know it came up in one of the discussions the other night because one of the problems is gold has a lot of electromagnetic properties that are very interesting. And when you look at those electrostatic and electromagnetic properties of two different animals, they behave using different physics. One is I induce a pulse by sending a magnetic field, a pulse, a radio wave downstream, and it causes a charge to change on the surface by induction, magnetic induction on the surface of that gold. And then the gold, reorients its charge and reflects back a pulse. That pulse is picked up by a thing called a metal detector. And so what happens is that's one type of induction. Another type of induction is this electrostatic induction, which can induce a charge shift on the surface of the gold that causes a force that causes the gold to move in a case, you know, because we're following Newton's law where it won't move unless there's some other 
some other force acting on it. Well, the other force is this electrostatic charge, and it can indeed cause the gold to move pretty swiftly, especially small particles of gold, which comes in real handy. It's not so good for big chunks of gold. It doesn't really have, affect it because there isn't enough force. But when you're talking about uh, fine, fine gold, powder gold, found in, in uh, the kind of material found in the desert, this can come in real handy for separating fine gold. It doesn't work if the gold and the material it's in are conductive because it shorts that thing out. That's why you have to wait till it's drier or you have to put out your piles and dry them all out. It's very important when you're, when you're, dry, <clears throat> um, when you're dry washing to dry out the material, your feed, that goes into the to the thing or find some way to air dry it before it goes in you know uh, the more air the better but the drier the better because that if it's not dry will short out that charge and that means there's less force plus remember we talked about earlier that you can have that water flow um, <clears throat> causing it to stick to the other guy and in the process uh, it will cause it to uh, it. wrong window Jess so if it sticks together, clumps together because of the the surface tension of the water or the dew on the surface of that material, then that electrostatic charge is not only getting shorted out, but it's also having to fight that surface tension. So it's less effective. The two work hand in hand. So if it's dry material, it's a better insulator. If it's dry material, there's no surface tension. So the pieces come apart very cleanly and can be separated into the bottom of your dry washer. And so that's kind of it for tonight. I just thought I'd touch bases about electrostatic charge and gold and how important it is to know what you're doing and how to do it. And uh, this is just another one of those pieces where I talk about that. Um, <clears throat> again, check out the uh, gold and water flow and the uh, sourdoughminer.com 2020 offer. Uh, that's kind of what we're doing tonight so that you can find gold in rivers and creeks and basins. Uh, the report is a simple report about the process by which water moves gold and where it will tend to move it and where it will tend not to. And so knowing that and knowing a bit more about how water influences gold movement, kind of like this electrostatic charge discussion tonight, you can find more gold to start with. So good prospecting and good night. This is Prospector Jess over and out. I'll catch you next time on hunting for gold <clears throat> so um i think that's it for tonight i just wanted to touch bases i'm over on the other window again <laughs> so check out prospector jess on youtube channel subscribe so you can get the information there uh, sourdoughminer.com is one blog and huntingfuel.com is the other blog we have where we have all kinds of articles and other videos that you'll want to look up and subscribe to our email so that you can find out more about how to find gold. We're here to help you find more gold. Prospector Jess, over and out, and good night. Good prospecting. <laughs>